Sculpture Fest 2011 featured artist Roger Goldenberg visual improvisation jazz you know I think if you start wrestling with the art it kills it so it's an improvisation you know I mean that's why I've been calling my work visual jazz it's a parallel art form to music, ja musical jazz and the language of description is very similar it's the same really um, and there's rhythm and movement and timber and tone the color the musicians are always talking about notes having a certain color um, floor, so I'll roll out the canvas and then just get on it and I'll start I'll start making shapes you know and, and just you know you can walk on it and so it's just a very gestural kind of you know About two or three moves into the painting and it it becomes its own you know it's no longer like in a fetal stage it's a being of some sort that you know has been born and then it has its needs well one of the things I was trying to I guess replicate in a way because those are shapes I, I, I've tried painting oil paintings on stretched canvases that were rectangles and I don't know if it was my exuberance or what but I would tend to paint the whole area and I really am most moved by shapes so because I, I feel like life can't be described by a rectangle it's just, you know, it's not the way life is. So early on, as I became an artist, I realized how much time... I think that learning to embrace the artistic process also t brought forward the idea of how much human beings, how much time we spend trying to control. And um, I think, you know, to be a successful artist, you really have to relinquish control and really just be immersed in process and with all of the skills that you've developed, you just have to trust that the result, there will be a result and it will be satisfying. So moving from the rectangle to, to shapes, I'm always looking for, it's always a metaphor for life. Whatever I do seems to be some sort of a metaphor for life, that's how I feel about it. So the shapes represent a much more organic feel about how life is. It's not linear, it's not rectangular. Angles really don't have much to do with it. Um, when you start really looking in nature, the shapes are very irregular. I mean, there is, there is symmetry and patterning, but when you start amassing them like in leaves of trees or how trees butt against one another and their shapes against the skyline or clouds against the black background of blue, you start seeing how my paintings really do, are influenced by nature. I was traveling between Lebanon, you know, to, to Portsmouth, my, where my studio is, and all across Route 101, there are all these birch saplings along the highway. And I was remembering Robert Frost's poem, Swinging from Birches. And so I thought, oh yeah, yeah, of course, you know, birch bends. And I, there's delight for me in the fact that I like that they're, ephemeral. They're not something made out of bronze. They're not something that's like mankind muscling its permanent impact on the, you know, on the scene. Um, it's not welded steel. It's something that will slowly deteriorate, but the, the, the elegance, it's watercolor paper lashed to birch and sort of the delicacy of the engineering involved, you know, that there's these delicate little parts that working in concert with each other stand up to some of the huge forces of nature. Each of the paintings is really colorful, except one. Right. Yeah, it was as white. It's kind of odd. Right. It's so yellow, but it's more of a moon <laughs> than a, um, a... It's a place where people can project their their painting onto it, you know. And that's sort of a peace symbol for me, without 
being, you know, um, I had a professor that would have said, without being obvious, but, you know, it's just sort of a subtle, quiet spot that hasn't been subjected to my influence too much other than just the coatings of the varnish. It was my sister that said, oh, it's the moon next to the, you know, sort of a starry, the inverse of a starry sky, the blue and the white. But I think of it as peace and a place where someone can have the opportunity to kind of fill in or wonder what they would put there. Or just wonder. <laughs> That's good too. Give, you know, just take time out. These seem like little solos. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, or little quintets or quartets, I guess, and trios. Oh yeah, when they're put together, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. So, um, the, the, although the pairing, the groupings are kind of random. I was, I was, I like the uh, randomness is something I'm pretty comfortable with. It was more important. The shapes of the branches were more important. I was trying to pair up shapes of the branches that would be appropriate for each grouping. And I figured the paintings would take care of themselves. Yeah, it's all improvisation. And my the paintings that are typical of me are complete improvisations uh, from beginning to end. They're like a jam session. So this is now a jam session because they're all going to dance and move however they want or can. And it's sort of out of my hands a different tune every day. Um, being a featured artist, I, I, you know, I had more say in the matter than, than other artists. So, um, and I think when Charlotte saw the, the scale, and I mean, she knows the intensity with which I've been making these, it's been over a six month project. So she just thought, oh my goodness, you know, it needs the whole space. And, um, you know, Charlotte's also talked a lot about um, communicating with her deceased daughter. You know, she was very connected with her daughter Polly and that, you know, there was that living connection and then the spatial connection, the house up on the hill, down to the farm, and now that Polly, since Polly has died, there's this other place, you know, and there's still that dialogue and connection. And so this was sort of thinking of the connecting the two places. And so to have the whole field and have, have the have it wend its way up through this whole field towards the hilltop. It was very cool. You know, spiritual is one thing and religious, I think, is another. And I just, but I'm always intrigued with the idea of energy and what we do with our energy and what it does when it's released into the world, you know, the universe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether there's life, multiple lives or not, you know, heaven, hell, and all of that, I think that the question mark for me is, you know, where where does our energy go? I believe in the collective unconscious, so I believe that whatever the human experience was from our past, we carry in us. So the language of these, I think, is rather universal. Um, so, um, so the, my connection to the Tibetan prayer flags uh, it is more with the idea that by creating, whether it's a prayer, which those are, they also have color, or these, uh, you know, they're sending a positive force in the universe. And, and uh, painters like myself believe that paintings can change the world. <laughs>